Hi there everyone, this is Ma'am Lovely, your Media and Information Literacy Teacher. And for today, I'll be showing you a video on how we can do the Information Literary Process Activity, which is the activity for Module 4B. So in this example, I'll be giving out the instructions first. First of all, you are to choose an existing book, TV show, or film to focus on. So you will be imagining yourself as a story writer who is paid to write or develop a sequel to this work. So with this one, the main thing that we would like to do is to follow the characteristics of the information literary process to create an outline of what you plan to include in the sequel and what sources you might need to accomplish the material. And really important for us to cite the proper sources where you got all of that information. So why is the information literary process important? So in every single um, literary piece that we see, we tend to see a lot of references. So even the very fantasy type of stories, they even have their own references, call-outs, easter eggs to some other references. So with that one, we need to have the information um, accurate as well when it comes to those shows which may need those things. So for this one, I'll be naming first a book, movie, or show. So in your module, this is not part. However, I do recommend that you place a row above the information needs for us to be able to identify what that book, mo movie, or show is. Um, we have here the word file where I'll be placing my answers. And also on the left, you have here my browser ready for us to be able to do any type of information um, sourcing. So the example that I'll be giving, it's not going to be a book, movie, or show, um, but I'll be giving out a game. Um, however, for you guys, please limit it to only a book, movie, or show. Um, do not add comics to it. However, if that comic has its own show, then it can be included. Um, and also light novels for the book. So for this one, it's really important for you to choose a book, movie, or show that you are familiar with or else this is not going to work or you're not be going to be able to appreciate it. So with this one, um, I'll be getting or I'll be using an example of a game that I really like. So this game, Persona 5, um, it is a AAA game by Atlas. So I chose this one because it has some sort of a story element, which is really necessary for us to be able to create this activity. The first thing that we'll be looking into is information needs. So it answers the question, what information do you need? So in particular, um, when you're going to look into a story or into a certain type of plot in writing a show, a movie, or a book, it has to be somewhat accurate. So, for example, in, let's say, Grey's Anatomy or a lot of doctor surgical shows, you need to be able to be specific when it comes to the procedures, to the terminologies, so that you have some sort of a medical accuracy. It is understood that for books, movies, or shows, you have to have some sort of entertainment. However, the illusion of that enter entertainment is broken if you don't have medically accurate information. Um, this can also be applied to a lot of fictional um, fictional liter literature. So, for example, we have here the Percy Jackson movies or the Percy Jackson books. So, with that one, it is referencing a lot of Greek mythology. So, even though, let's say, Greek mythology is mythology, it is still considered as an important part of literature and it has to be properly referenced when you're doing um, the sequel to a certain Percy Jackson film or a certain Percy Jackson book. Probably an exception for this one is those types of films that are very fantastical to the point that they are the kickstarters of their own genre. So an example that I can think of is Harry Potter. You can't really find a lot of references when it comes to that. However, you would see a little bit of Easter eggs here and there, like let's say references to um, Merlin from the Arthurian legends, but there's not really quite a lot there. Um, regardless of what movie, book, or show you choose, you need to have some sort of reference that you'll be placing on your um, sequel for it to become more believable and therefore more immersive. So for this one, I'll be dividing it into three parts. So you can divide this in any way that you would like to. So I'll be dividing it according to the plot, to the setting, and 
the concepts. So with this one, once you've listed down the types of information that you may reference it with, then you can specify the types of information needs. So for example, for the plot, Obviously, for you to create a sequel for Persona 5, you have to know the plot of Persona 5. Yeah, in some of the games, it may be necessary for you to know what are... You need to know like the prequels or the sequels for you to be able to know what is currently happening. However, for some of the games like let's say Persona 5 or even Final Fantasy, um, the stories aren't necessarily related to each other. They do have the same concepts. However, this character from Final Fantasy 7 isn't the same with Final Fantasy 8. One of the important parts of um, tarot cards is something which we call as the Fool's Journey. So with that one, how the character would move about with his life is, is quite mimicking something which we call as the fool's journey. So you can have something like that. Um, next one, let's move on to the setting. So for setting, this may depend on your book, movie, or show. But for Persona 5, um, a lot of the settings where this game is happening is based on real life Tokyo. So specifically the districts of Shibuya and Sangenjaya, which is the basis of Yongenjaya in game. So if you're going to see it um, in a lot of videos, it's very accurate. So we have here an example of the Shibuya station. You can see that even the very details on where the posters are, where some of the foundations are, are really there. So that type of accuracy is something that is really important to the gamers and for those who are actually living in Shibuya or who has been in Shibuya. Next one for setting, we can also probably look into the Japanese culture. So this can be part of concepts, however, um, the Japanese culture is more in terms of the setting, so how you interact with your different types of setting. And then the last one is for the concepts. Um, for the concepts of Persona 5, that um, the term Persona is actually part of something which we call as Jungian psychology. So they have ideas like having a person having different personas, a person having a persona that they don't really like, which is something which we call as a shadow, which is the main antagonist or a lot of the antagonists for the Persona series. So with that one, so another thing that I've stated is that for Persona 5, they specify in terms of tarot readings or tarot cards in French. So we have a lot of different types of tarot cards. So we have the standard 22, which is part of the Fool's Journey. But for the French tarot readings, I believe it's around 16 um, cards only. Now that we have our information needs, we're going to have to look into the second part, which is the sources of information. So this answers the question, where will you get them? So this is based from your information needs. And the sources of information here can be either primary, secondary, or tertiary. So with this one, I'll probably divide my cells into two columns for us to have one for the primary, and then another one for the secondary. So you can have another tertiary right here, however, that's not really necessary. So for tertiary, this is more for period view journals. So if you have more medical, uh, more accurate types of studies that you would like to integrate into your literature, then that's possible. But for this one, I'll just be sticking with primary and secondary. So with this one, I'll have to list down how am I supposed to get these different information needs. So first of all, for the primary, um, let's look into the Persona 5 plot. So how can I get a primary experience of how the plot is? So one way for you to do that is for you to actually play the game. So however, for books, movies, or shows, that may not be possible. Just saying that you've watched the movie or you've read the book would, would say that you are a primary source. That's not really how it works for literature. So with that one, you can look into first-hand accounts. If the movie is based on a true story, then you'll have to look into documentaries of those real-life incidents. Next one, um, probably let's look into the Tokyo area. So probably one of the ways for you to get a primary source is again through indigenous knowledge. So you can look into the accounts of those who are actually part of 
um, or who are residents in Tokyo. So probably you can look into different Tokyo documentaries. And then let's say for Jungian psychology, um, psychologies in the work in the term so with that one we may need a an actual psychologist or the account of an actual psychologist and then the last one we have also the french tarot cards one primary source that we can look into is actual tarot cards so the experience of having actual tarot cards and what they mean so for a lot of let's say the tarot cards that you buy in bookstores you can have different little guides that you can see there so you can also use that as a primary source next one is secondary source so this is really important because for a lot of us due to our limited experiences or limited capabilities right now the best way that we can get information is through secondary sources another way for us to be able to to understand the plot of Persona 5 or whatever literature that we have is that if that one has an official website, then it is possible for us to visit that one. Um, probably let's look into the setting. Of course, not everyone is able to go through Tokyo or you won't really find very specific examples of what you want from the documentaries. So with that one, another thing that we can do is to actually go to different blog posts on Tokyo and maybe their culture. So here we have our different primary and secondary sources. Next part is access to information. How are we supposed to access our sources of information? So with this one, you'll have to identify how you're going to actually access them. So is it through book? Is it through indigenous knowledge? Is it through internet? And so on and so forth. So with this one, um, I'll just be giving one example of how we can access the information. And of course, very easily is through the use of internet sources. However, you can't just limit yourself to that one. It has been very specific to your instructions that you have to cite the proper sources where you got all of that information. So this is where it comes in handy. So here I have my Google search bar. So I'll be listing down where I can get probably Persona 5 references. So I'll just be placing here where I can get the Persona 5 official website. So as you can see here, we have different searches. So we have, of course, the Wikipedia page. We have for Persona 5 Royale, which is an extension of that game. However, we're just looking for the base game. So this one. So with this, you'll be clicking this one. Actually, you only need the link and also other information that you may want to look into. For this one, it's best for you to properly cite your sources through the use of the APA format, either 6th or 7th edition, the 7th edition being the latest one. Yeah, I'll be citing my source. So first of all, I need to write who actually created this one. So it's very obvious that it was created by Atlas. And then I'll be writing the description or the title of that website. And then with this one, I'll be writing what this is. So it's an official website. And then afterwards, I'll be writing retreat from and then the actual link. So by the way, when you're copy pasting, this is in Century Gothic. If I just paste it like this, like normal pasting, you would see that it would have a different font. So let's try to change the way how we copy paste. What I'd like you to do is to press Ctrl Alt V and then you'll be seeing here an example of paste special. So in default, it will be placing it here in under HTML format, which is it's going to copy what this font actually is. So to make it sure that it sticks to the font that you have right now, you're going to have to place unformatted Unicode text and then click OK. And as you can see, it is in Century Gothic 11 as well. Next one is probably let's look into um, blog posts and Tokyo and their culture. So what I can do right here is I'll be searching Tokyo culture. And then based from this one, I'll be seeing here different sources on how what we can do in Tokyo, what their culture is, and so on and so forth. So with this one, you'll be needing a little bit of how you're going to evaluate your information, which will be for the next one. However, based from what I know is that 
Go Tokyo, which is this one right here. They're one of the pioneers and also they're one of the main sources for looking into traveling in Japan and Tokyo in general. So I'll be placing here um, blog posts on Tokyo culture. And then I'll be referencing this one. So again, I'll be referencing who created this. So it's actually Go Tokyo, which is a company. And then I'll be copying this one, Go Tokyo, the official Tokyo travel guide. And then again, I'll just be placing here website because it's not really an official website. Then retrieved from, copy this, control alt V, unformatted Unicode text, and then I have the link right here. Probably I'd like to focus more on very specific types, so it's not just about this website in particular, but also I'd like into prob looking into probably more of their cultural experience. So I can click that one. So again, blog posts on Tokyo culture. And then who created it? Same, Go Tokyo. And then the title, traditional cultural experience. And then experience Japanese culture firsthand. Then for this one, this is more of this is still more of a website. Then retrieved from copy this link and then paste appropriately. So here we have our different internet sources. It is recommended that you do one um one source for every single source of information that you have here. Um, for the primary sources, if you have, let's say, for an actual psychologist or therapist, then you'll have to write them at per name. Um, if you have no idea on how you're going to find a psychologist or a therapist, then you can do something like crowdsourcing. So for more information on how to access information, primary sources and secondary sources, we can look into your module 3, which is media sources. The next part is evaluating information. So for this one, for evaluating information up until stop information research, um, research I'll just be more on explaining it and not necessarily giving you ideas, um, giving you specific examples, because for this one, we would more or less have the same answers. It depends mostly for how complex or how detailed you actually created your information needs, sources of information, and access to information. So first of all, we have here evaluate information. So it answers the question, how will you check the quality of information? So again, you'll have to look into your chapter three media sources. It's placed right there. One of the things that it has recommended is for you to check the author. So is the author legitimate? Is the author actually someone who is um, resource, um, is a good resource rather? Um, do they have years of experience regarding with that one? So you can do something like that. You can also look for other resources on how you can evaluate information. But again, you can look into your chapter 3 as a very good reference. The next part is organizing information. So it answers the question, how will you organize and store your information? So this is more of when you're actually creating your SQL or when you actually need to access the information for your SQL, how are you supposed to look into them? How are you supposed to store them for easier access later on in the future? So for this one, it depends on whatever type of media that you have. So if you're creating a book, then it's probably best for you to have cue cards or flashcards. For movies or shows, then you may want to look into different, um, creating different storyboards. So for games, it's easier for us to do is because um, one thing that we can look into is through the use of version control. So version control is actually um, creating iterations of your work. So having a version one, version two, version three of your work so that if you have, let's say, greater mistakes on your version three than your version two, you can go back to your version two and see so that it would be restored. 
Next part is the three E's of information. How will you cite your sources of information? So with this one, what are the different ways that we can source your information? So for this, one of the best ways is for you to cite it properly through the use of the APA format. Again, the latest one is our seventh edition. Next one is to communicate information. It answers the question, how will you communicate and create them? So with this one, um, it would really depend on whatever literature you have chosen. So for books, movies, or shows, how are you going to interlace it with your plot? How are you going to interlace the concepts to your setting? And so on and so forth. So how are you going to release that information? Are you just simply going to state it? Or are you going to make it in such a way that it's entertaining and immersive at the same time? So one of the ways that you can do it in-game is for you to interlace the characters, um, the characteristics of the concepts that you've created. So with this one, we have tarot cards and the fool's journey. So when you're looking into tarot readings or even union psychology, there are different types of archetypes. So we have the hermit, we have the fool, we have the empress, all of those things, which can be interlaced for other characters. So we're going to interlace the characteristics of the union psychology archetypes to the new characters or the characters that we'll be creating because you're creating a sequel you can't necessarily mess with the old characters and then the last part is how you're going to stop information research so with this one as stated everything comes to an end when are you going to make so many references because if you create so many references it's basically just an inside joke for those dedicated viewers that you're basically shunning out your knower viewers or your viewer knower audiences so with this one you have to have a tasteful um divide on how when are you going to stop making so many references and if in case when are you going to stop finding the information that you need because in some cases finding probably um, specific parts of Tokyo may not be applicable to your information research. So probably we can answer this question. What are the possible hindrances or challenges that you may encounter in developing your project? So one of the things that we can look into is the setting. So in as much as we would like to make it very accurate to the Tokyo setting, we can't possibly do that. Number one, we don't really have money. Number two, we're kind of limited to our houses. So with this one, probably we can look into the first hand or the first hand visitation of Tokyo or to Tokyo. So with that, you have your created information literary process. So so I hope you're able to understand how this activity is supposed to work. Um, if you have any more questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you so much and please stay safe.